An autopilot is a system used to control the trajectory of an aircraft, marine craft or spacecraft without constant manual control by a human operator being required. Autopilots do not replace human operators, but instead they assist them in controlling the vehicle. This allows them to focus on broader aspects of operations such as monitoring the trajectory, weather and systems. The autopilot is often used in conjunction with the autothrottle, when present, which is the analogous system controlling the power delivered by the engines. The autopilot system on airplanes is sometimes colloquially referred to as George. Topic. First autopilots In the early days of aviation, aircraft required the continuous attention of a pilot to fly safely. As aircraft range increased, allowing flights of many hours, the constant attention led to serious fatigue. An autopilot is designed to perform some of the tasks of the pilot. The first aircraft autopilot was developed by Sperry Corporation in 1912. The autopilot connected a gyroscopic heading indicator and attitude indicator to hydraulically operated elevators and rudder. Ailerons were not connected as wing dihedral was counted upon to produce the necessary roll stability. It permitted the aircraft to fly straight and level on a compass course without a pilot's attention, greatly reducing the pilot's workload. Lawrence Sperry, the son of famous inventor Elmer Sperry, demonstrated it in 1914 at an aviation safety contest held in Paris. Sperry demonstrated the credibility of the invention by flying the aircraft with his hands away from the controls and visible to onlookers. Elmer Sperry Jr., the son of Lawrence Sperry, and Captain Shearer's continued work on the same autopilot after the war, and in 1930 they tested a more compact and reliable autopilot which kept a U.S. Army Air Corps aircraft on a true heading and altitude for three hours. In 1930, the Royal Aircraft Establishment in the United Kingdom developed an autopilot called a pilot's assister that used a pneumatically spun gyroscope to move the flight controls. The autopilot was further developed, to include e.g. improved control algorithms and hydraulic servomechanisms. Adding more instruments such as radio navigation aids made it possible to fly at night and in bad weather. In 1947 a U.S. Air Force C-54 made a transatlantic flight, including takeoff and landing, completely under the control of an autopilot. Bill Lear developed his F-5 automatic pilot and automatic approach control system, and was awarded the Collier Trophy for 1949. In the early 1920s, the standard oil tanker J.A. Moffett became the first ship to use an autopilot. The Lunar Module Digital Autopilot of the Apollo program was an early example of a fully digital autopilot system in spacecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Modern autopilots Not all of the passenger aircraft flying today have an autopilot system. Older and smaller general aviation aircraft especially are still hand-flown, and even small airliners with fewer than 20 seats may also be without an autopilot as they are used on short-duration flights with two pilots. The installation of autopilots in aircraft with more than 20 seats is generally made mandatory by international aviation regulations. There are three levels of control in autopilots for smaller aircraft. A single-axis autopilot controls an aircraft in the roll axis only, such autopilots are also known colloquially as wing levelers, reflecting their limitations. A two-axis autopilot controls an aircraft in the pitch axis as well as roll, and may be little more than a wing leveler. With limited pitch oscillation correcting ability, or it may receive inputs from onboard radio navigation systems to provide true automatic flight guidance once the aircraft has taken off until shortly before landing, or its capabilities may lie somewhere between these two extremes. A three-axis autopilot adds control in the yaw axis and is not required in many small aircraft. 
Autopilots in modern complex aircraft are three axis and generally divide a flight into taxi, takeoff, climb, cruise, level flight, descent, approach, and landing phases. Autopilots exist that automate all of these flight phases except taxi and takeoff. An autopilot controlled landing on a runway and controlling the aircraft on rollout i.e. keeping it on the center of the runway is known as a CAT IIIB landing or autoland, available on many major airports runways today, especially at airports subject to adverse weather phenomena such as fog. Landing, rollout, and taxi control to the aircraft parking position is known as CAT IIIC. This is not used to date, but may be used in the future. An autopilot is often an integral component of a flight management system. Modern autopilots use computer software to control the aircraft. The software reads the aircraft's current position, and then controls a flight control system to guide the aircraft. In such a system, besides classic flight controls, many autopilots incorporate thrust control capabilities that can control throttles to optimize the airspeed. The autopilot in a modern large aircraft typically reads its position and the aircraft's attitude from an inertial guidance system. Inertial guidance systems accumulate errors over time. They will incorporate error reduction systems such as the carousel system that rotates once a minute so that any errors are dissipated in different directions and have an overall nulling effect. Error in gyroscopes is known as drift. This is due to physical properties within the system, be it mechanical or laser guided, that corrupt positional data. The disagreements between the two are resolved with digital signal processing, most often a six-dimensional Kalman filter. The six dimensions are usually roll, pitch, yaw, altitude, latitude, and longitude. Aircraft may fly routes that have a required performance factor, therefore the amount of error or actual performance factor must be monitored in order to fly those particular routes. The longer the flight, the more error accumulates within the system. Radio aids such as DME, DME updates, and GPS may be used to correct the aircraft position. Topic. Control wheel steering An option midway between fully automated flight and manual flying is control wheel steering CWS. Although it is becoming less used as a standalone option in modern airliners, CWS is still a function on many aircraft today. Generally, an autopilot that is CWS equipped has three positions, OFF, CWS, and CMD. In CMD command mode the autopilot has full control of the aircraft, and receives its input from either the heading, altitude setting, radio and navades, or the FMS flight management system. In CWS mode, the pilot controls the autopilot through inputs on the yoke or the stick. These inputs are translated to a specific heading and attitude, which the autopilot will then hold until instructed to do otherwise. This provides stability in pitch and roll. Some aircraft employ a form of CWS even in manual mode, such as the MD-11 which uses a constant CWS in roll. In many ways, a modern Airbus fly-by-wire aircraft in normal law is always in CWS mode. The major difference is that in this system the limitations of the aircraft are guarded by the flight computer, and the pilot cannot steer the aircraft past these limits. Topic. Computer system details The hardware of an autopilot varies from implementation to implementation, but is generally designed with redundancy and reliability as foremost considerations. For example, the Rockwell Collins AFDS 770 Autopilot Flight Director System used on the Boeing 777 uses triplicated FCP2002 microprocessors which have been formally verified and are fabricated in a radiation-resistant process, software and hardware in an autopilot are tightly controlled, and extensive test procedures are put in place. 
Some autopilots also use design diversity. In this safety feature, critical software processes will not only run on separate computers and possibly even using different architectures, but each computer will run software created by different engineering teams, often being programmed in different programming languages. It is generally considered unlikely that different engineering teams will make the same mistakes. As the software becomes more expensive and complex, design diversity is becoming less common because fewer engineering companies can afford it. The flight control computers on the Space Shuttle used this design. There were five computers, four of which redundantly ran identical software, and a fifth backup running software that was developed independently. The software on the fifth system provided only the basic functions needed to fly the shuttle, further reducing any possible commonality with the software running on the four primary systems. Topic. Stability augmentation systems A stability augmentation system SAS, is another type of automatic flight control system, however, instead of maintaining the aircraft on a predetermined attitude or flight path, the SAS will actuate the aircraft flight controls to dampen out aircraft buffeting regardless of the attitude or flight path. SAS can automatically stabilize the aircraft in one or more axes. The most common type of SAS is the yaw damper which is used to eliminate the Dutch roll tendency of swept wing aircraft. Some yaw dampers are integral to the autopilot system while others are standalone systems. Yaw dampers usually consist of a yaw rate sensor either a gyroscope or angular accelerometer, a computer, amplifier and a servo actuator. The yaw damper uses yaw rate sensor to sense when the aircraft begins a Dutch roll. A computer processes the signals from the yaw rate sensor to determine the amount of rudder movement that is required to dampen out the Dutch roll. The computer then commands the servo actuator to move the rudder that amount. The Dutch roll is dampened out and the aircraft becomes stable about the yaw axis. Because Dutch roll is an instability that is inherent to all swept wing aircraft, most swept wing aircraft have some sort of yaw damper system installed. There are two types of yaw dampers, series yaw dampers and parallel yaw dampers. The servo actuator of a parallel yaw damper will actuate the rudder independently of the rudder pedals while the servo actuator of a series yaw damper is clutched to the rudder control quadrant and will result in pedal movement when the system commands the rudder to move. Some aircraft have stability augmentation systems that will stabilize the aircraft in more than a single axis. The Boeing B-52, for example, requires both pitch and yaw SAS in order to provide a stable bombing platform. Many helicopters have pitch, roll and yaw SAS systems. Pitch and roll SAS systems operate much the same way as the yaw damper described above, however, instead of dampening out Dutch roll, they will dampen pitch and roll oscillations or buffeting to improve the overall stability of the aircraft. Topic. Autopilot for ILS landings Instrument-aided landings are defined in categories by the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO. These are dependent upon the required visibility level and the degree to which the landing can be conducted automatically without input by the pilot. Cat I, this category permits pilots to land with a decision height of 200 feet 61 meters and a forward visibility or runway visual range RVR of 550 meters 1,800 feet. Autopilots are not required. Cat 2, this category permits pilots to land with a decision height between 200 feet 61 meters and 100 feet 30 meters and a RVR of 300 meters 980 feet. Autopilots have a fail passive requirement. Cat IA This category permits pilots to land with a decision height as low as 50 feet 15 meters and a RVR of 200 meters 660 feet. It needs a fail-passive autopilot. 
There must be only a 10-6 probability of landing outside the prescribed area. Cat IIIB, as IA but with the addition of automatic rollout after touchdown incorporated with the pilot taking control some distance along the runway. This category permits pilots to land with a decision height less than 50 feet or no decision height and a forward visibility of 250 feet 76 meters in Europe 76 meters. Compare this to aircraft size, some of which are now over 70 meters 230 feet long or 300 feet 91 meters in the United States. For a landing without decision aid, a fail operational autopilot is needed. For this category some form of runway guidance system is needed, at least fail passive but it needs to be fail operational for landing without decision height or for RVR below 100 meters 330 feet. CAT IIIC, as IIIB but without decision height or visibility minimums, also known as 00. Not yet available on commercial airliners, but may be available in the near future. Fail passive autopilot, in case of failure, the aircraft stays in a controllable position and the pilot can take control of it to go around or finish landing. It is usually a dual-channel system. Fail operational autopilot, in case of a failure below alert height, the approach, flare and landing can still be completed automatically. It is usually a triple-channel system or dual-dual system. Topic. Radio controlled models In radio controlled modeling, and especially RC aircraft and helicopters, an autopilot is usually a set of extra hardware and software that deals with pre programming the model's flight. Topic. See also Acronyms and abbreviations in avionics Gyro compass Self-driving car <laughs>